Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Autumn and this video is going to be a weekend in my life. This weekend vlog is special for a couple of different reasons. The first reason is that it is my mother's birthday weekend and the second reason is that I'm actually off this entire weekend. I work most weekends in my local hospital so it is extra special that I was able to get this weekend off. You can expect some reading, writing, and lifestyle content in this video. I hope you enjoy it and thank you for being here. I ran out of coffee creamer this morning, so I wasn't able to finish my cup of coffee, but while we were at the store getting all of our groceries for the weekend, I picked up some more creamer. So now we're having iced coffee for the afternoon. We're just going to be casually going about the day. I am going to start off with the book I'll be reading this weekend, and it's called The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. My mother and I are actually buddy reading this book. The synopsis says, hidden in the depths of 18th century London, a secret apothecary apothecary shop caters to an unusual kind of clientele. Women across the city whisper of a mysterious figure named Nella who sells well-disguised poisons to use against the oppressive men in their lives. Nella's dark world is no place for her newest patron, a precarious 12-year-old girl named Eliza Fanning, but their unexpected bond sparks a string of consequences that echoes through the centuries. 200 years later, aspiring historian Caroline Park cell discovers an aged apothecary vial in the river times or thymes as she is newly grappling with the searing betrayal of her husband's infidelity a curious research project is exactly the distraction caroline needs but when she discovers a link between the vial and london's long unsolved apothecary murders caroline's upended present soon collides with an explosive history binding her fate to nella's and eliza's in a stunning twist that transcends the the barrier of time. I think that this sounds like a very interesting read. It's a pretty short read too, so mom and I wanted to buddy read it for the weekend for her birthday. I have another book on standby, but I don't know if I'll get to reading it. I'll just go ahead and mention it. The Ballerinas by Rachel Kapulk Dale. This is a thriller. I think that this one sounds pretty cool too. I won't give a synopsis just in case if I don't get to the book in this video. Crash is walking behind you. Sorry guys. <laughs> You good, buddy? You gonna get settled? For all of my writing updates, I will be talking about Project Ice, which is my high fantasy project. I am working on draft two edits, I guess that's what I should say, or I guess it's edits of draft one in order to get the draft to draft two. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the vlog. It is absolutely pouring outside, so that's why I want to do a little bit of reading. While it's nice and cozy and a little bit dark and dim outside, it just seems like the perfect time to start reading about this lost apothecary in 18th, 18th century London. Oh, perfect. This is the perfect vibe. a little out of breath. I was just playing chase with my kitten. He likes when we run around the house. So we were just doing all of that. I want to give you my writing update. I haven't given much of a writing update after sharing my game plan for editing draft one and getting it ready for draft two. I have done a lot of work. Believe it or not, it's been pretty wild and I feel like there's a lot that I have started working on with this second round of edits. So if you watched my game plan video, you know that I am primarily focusing on the plot and the characters of this story. What I have been doing for this next round of edits, I am rereading the story the first draft a second time. I've already reread the whole thing. I took a little bit of notes on certain parts of the story, a lot of continuity errors. Anything that stood out to me in the first read-through, I took notes on. In the second read-through, I am really pulling apart the plot 
and the characters. What I've done so far with Act 1, I have written down all of the things that need to happen in Act 1. Whether they've happened in Draft 1 or not, that's a different story. But if I have written these beats for Act 1, if I have written them in Draft 1, they are highlighted a certain color. If they're not included at the end of each of the chapters that I want these things to happen at or under certain scenes, I have left myself notes and have left bullet points to say this is where I want X, Y, and Z to happen in draft two. I have been using my little journal a lot with trying to prepare myself for draft two. I have written out a lot of things that I need to make sure I cover with my main character or my main characters. As I've mentioned in my game plan video, I am contemplating the idea of making this story multi-POV. I need to answer all of the questions I have here, all of the tools that I'm using to figure out my story and to get draft one to a draft two. I have pulled this information from Brandon Sanderson's writing lectures, Story Genius by Lisa Cron, Save the Cat by Jessica Brody. Those are the three primary sources where I've pulled all of this stuff from. So I will leave everything linked down below. Definitely check them out if you're curious about the methods and the things that I'm using, if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about. I need to figure out my main character or my main characters. The three essential things that each of these characters have and the questions that I'm going to be answering myself is what is this character's problem? What's their want and what's their need? What kind of problem or problems is my main character facing? What is something that my hero wants so badly and is proactively trying to get this? What does the hero think will fix these problems or will make their lives better. Answer to number one and two are my character's goals. And this is what they are actively striving to achieve throughout the novel. So these are just basic questions that I need to answer. I mean, really, I should answer them for all of my characters, not just my main characters. Even for some of the side characters, this would be good information to know. Because even if those things are never included in the story, myself as the author, I should know these things. It will help me better understand the side characters and and to write them into the story. They might not necessarily be things I have to share with the reader, but to know those questions and to know those basic things about each of the characters, I mean, that just automatically makes a character more three-dimensional. So for my plot, what I've been doing, in addition to going through and bullet pointing all of the plot out, like I've been doing for act one, and I've also been doing this for act two, I haven't gone into act three yet, so I haven't quite bullet pointed the plot out like I did here. For the plot, I am asking myself, what is the core plot of the story? And what are the promises that I am promising in this story? Such as the tone promise, character arcs, and the plot promise. Under the plot promise, I have the umbrella plot, and then I have the core plot of the story. At the tail end of this, I have what are the payoffs to all of this stuff. This information I pulled from Brandon Sanderson's writing lectures. He talks about the promise, your progress through the story, and your payoff. That is for your plot. I've been writing some stuff out for the plot of the story, trying to connect the ideas that I have in the story. This is a cool idea, and this is an okay idea. How can I connect these two and make them better? That's what I've been really focusing on going through this next round of edits and rereading draft one. I've been taking notes on the setting and the world building, the physical setting of this world, the weather patterns. I've been trying to understand a little bit more of the map and what kind of flora and the fauna, the magic, the visuals of the story, the terrain. Again, those things will come later, but as I'm reading the story, it's good to be aware of those things. I'm also thinking about the cultural setting with this story. I know I need to understand this a little bit more because the culture and the religious system in this world is going to play a part into why certain things have to happen and why certain other things can't happen. I haven't really expanded a whole lot on the religion and in draft one it wasn't a big topic of discussion. It doesn't need to be but I just need to understand certain parts of the religious system or the religious systems in this world. Also focus on the government. I also have a few names of some of the places that are going to be in this this world. Not my primary focus, but 
I have been sitting here and some names have just popped up in my head as I've been brainstorming. So then I write them down and here we are. Now talking more about my characters, I mentioned this, I think when I was rereading draft one of Project Ice, I no longer like those characters names, which means lucky me, I am going to be renaming a lot of these characters. As I have grown as a writer, I don't focus too much on the meaning of characters' names anymore. When I originally wrote the first draft of this story, the character names, a lot of them meant different things. One of my characters' names means she-wolf. I don't want that anymore. I think as I have matured as a reader and as a writer, that doesn't quite matter as much anymore. Just me. And the reasons I think that is because because when I read stories, I don't ever really Google characters' names. In the only case I've ever really known, like off the top of my head, a character's name, really knowing what it means, is Katniss Everdeen. Like the symbolism of her name is interesting, but it wasn't like I heard the name Katniss and I immediately Googled it if that makes any sense. While I think it's fun and cool to have certain names, to have certain meanings, I don't see my readers one day seeing the names that I have for my characters and googling them and being like, oh that means she-wolf. I think a good example also is thinking of Avatar The Last Airbender and the names of those characters. I've never googled those names, but based off what their names are, that kind of tells you what part of the world they're from or what nation they belong to. I've never googled Google Zuko or Aang or Sokka or Katara. I don't know what those names mean, but my point being is the names should be symbols. Someone's not Googling the name to figure out what it means. That That's my whole point, and I hope my explanation makes sense. What I mean is I am going into this story and changing some of the names of these characters only because I picked these names two years ago because I was like, oh, that means she-wolf or oh, that means warrior. No, we can do better than that. I am I'm going to do better than that and not have that be the reasons I choose names for my characters. I have been going through character names and figuring out the names I want to switch these people to. I've been liking some of the new names I've been coming up with and I think I'm doing a decent job with separating Cowl's society names like rich and poor. They have magic and if they don't have magic and like what their role is in the world and their names are revolving around that. But I have been giving myself some character tips for making these characters a little more well-rounded. I believe I got these two tips from Brandon Sanderson's writing lectures, but the first one is where does the character go and then the next one is what are their passions, their dreams, their hopes, and their fears. In Brandon Sanderson's writing lectures he talks about a sliding scale for your character's likability, proactivity, and competence. I have been redoing these for each of my characters. Now that I've written a first draft and I'm more comfortable with these characters, I am a lot more comfortable of challenging these characters and not making everybody really nice, really proactive, and competent in what they're doing. I am ready to make these characters' lives a living hell. I have been having a lot of fun figuring out where some of these characters should fall on the likability scale, on the proactivity scale, and their competence scale. And I've been also trying to think of what makes this character likable, what do they do that we cheer them on and what are things that they don't do that we just want to face palm and be like why are you making these decisions with proactivity what are they active about what are they trying to get and what are those things they care about or they want but why do they want these certain things versus other things and that revolves around the character's motive okay well what is motivating this character to do x y and z but not do these things and then the competence of the characters because not everybody can be competent in everything. What are these characters competent in? What are they not competent in? How does that create this character and make them more three-dimensional? And do all of these things make sense with the backstory I have for this character, where I am projecting this character to go? It's honestly a lot to think about while also trying to balance a plot, add extra layers of like, okay, well, we can't forget there's a magic system that's going on in this world. We can't forget about the world building. We can't forget about the plot and the subplot and all these other things that are 
are definitely going to be changing the sun. I'm chasing the sun. <laughs> Those are the things I have been working on. I've been really enjoying this editing. Um, I'm not saying it's been easy, but I have been enjoying it. As much as I do love drafting, I have been enjoying going back and seeing what I've been writing and trying to make it stronger. I am going to send it to my other self to give you the quick update on The Lost Apothecary. You probably thought I was gonna change my clothes and give you something different, but I didn't. I have read about 20% of The Lost Apothecary. I am really enjoying it so far. I think I'm gonna really like this story. I have been introduced to the two main characters and what their problems are. I've learned a little bit more about this Lost Apothecary. I'm having a great time. I like the writing. I think the characters are likable and the character that is set in 18th century London, she She's very interesting. She's a very intriguing person and we've learned a little bit as to how and why she has made this lost apothecary. Why she's doing what she's doing. I texted my mom to see if she's started it. An hour ago she hadn't started but she said that her and my dad were in the car and so they were gonna listen to it. I don't know if she ended up reading it at all but when I told her I was 20% in she was like I need to get on. And I was like, yeah, girl, you do. That's where I'm at currently with The Lost Apothecary. I'm hoping after I get my writing session in, feed my cat, I'll be able to do um, a little bit of reading. So I feel like this morning's been pretty chill. I have just been doing a little bit at a time with all of the cooking and everything. I made the bread and it's just a basic white bread. That's gonna be for my mom for her birthday present. I made some collard greens and they are slow cooking for the next three to four hours. It's almost 11 and everyone is supposed to kind of get here around one. I think I'm going to just casually, nonchalantly go ahead and start chopping up all of the chicken and doing all of the measurements for when I am going to be doing the chicken for the chicken and waffles. So my boyfriend is on the waffle duty, so he'll be making the buttermilk waffles and we'll be making those from scratch as well as like the chicken. The only other thing I have to cook are the green beans that's just a can. I'm gonna dump the cans into a pot and then just slow cook it on the stove and then just add some ingredients, stuff, whatever I have lying around the house. I'll just throw in there. That's it with the cooking for the weekend. Pretty short and simple and sweet, but now to the book update. I'm a little more than 30% into reading this guy. I'm really liking it. I'm having a lot of fun. It's a pretty easy breezy story so far. I mean, I feel like the writing style is really simple to understand. I think the three main characters that we're following, I like each of them. They're all very different. I do like the audiobook because each of the characters is a different narrator and that I like because it helps create their own voices. I also think the author has done a really good job so far at distinguishing who is telling the story and I like that because each of the characters in here, they're all in different stages of life too. One of the characters, she's in her early 40s. The other one, I believe it's her early 30s. And then we have a 12 year old. So far it's excellent writing. So I'm really enjoying it so far. Mom was giving me updates last night and I hadn't quite made it to certain parts in the book. She kept texting cause she was like, oh, this is happening. This is happening. This is happening. And so I had to mute my conversation with her because I hadn't gotten to that point yet. And I didn't want it to be spoiled for me, which it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal. She was 3% further along into the story than I was. So it wasn't super big deal. It wasn't like she was at 80% and I was at like three. I did write a little bit last night. I'm discovering with this story 
the story I'm writing, which is Project Ice. It's my high fantasy story that is set in a very dark, icy world, and it follows a cursed queen who is struggling with her magic. I almost feel like I have too many storylines going on in this story, and I almost feel like the storylines I have could be their own novels. <laughs> they are all interesting enough ideas where they could be their own separate stories. I'm not stuck in any way. I am just trying to brainstorm solutions to some of the plot holes that I have in the story. This is how I'm discovering I think I have too many plot lines going on. I think the magic in this world is too interesting intricate, too complicated. I don't think the magic that I want in this world, I don't think it fits when I'm trying to problem solve and I'm taking out the magic system in this world and I'm coming up with other solutions, other plot points and other possible ideas to fix the holes in the story. When I take out the magic system, these things and these solutions seem like they could work. But my issue is, is when I am starting to think of, okay, well, how can the magic and how can the characters and how all of this affects everybody and uh, that character, once I start putting all of that stuff back into the story, it's not making sense. The questions of like what, who, where, why, how, all of those questions seem to then go unanswered. I'm still trying to brainstorm and problem solve what I think the actual issue is here, and I do think it's something to do with the magic system, which sucks because I like the magic system in this world. I can make it work, I just need to take my time to try and work through it, and I don't know how long that's gonna take. <laughs> So I'm here to give you my final thoughts on The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. I did end up finishing this book. I wasn't able to finish it in the weekend though. It took me a couple of days after the weekend to finish this story. Also wanted to marinate in my thoughts before I came on here and talked to you guys about it. So here we are. I'm ready to talk about it. I am giving this book four and a half stars. I thought this story was very easily written. The writing style of the story was pretty easy to get into. It didn't feel too complicated. It didn't feel too wordy or chunky or anything like that. I loved all of the characters, our three main characters. I felt like they were all very unique and they all put their own unique spin on their part of the story. So we follow Nella and she is one of the perspectives in the 18th century in London and she is the owner of the Lost Apothecary. I loved her character. I loved how she viewed the world. The experience that she had and how that made her feel how she did towards you know certain people and just the world in general and she had a very bitter look on everything and I feel like she had lost a lot of hope and a lot of of willpower to live. Then we have our other character, her name is Eliza, and she is a 12 year old girl who is also in the 18th century part of this story. I really loved her because I feel like she breathed a breath of fresh air into this story, having a child's perspective. Uh, she was very naive, but she was also very smart. To me, I felt like she was very observant and she was so helpful and so hopeful through this entire story. And I really loved her character. I just felt like she had that beautiful, sweet innocence to bring to this story. And I think that her perspective really tied in this story. And then the third person perspective we had is Caroline and she is in modern day um, and Caroline was about 25 years old and I loved her character because I feel like she was a great character who was in between Nella and Eliza and then we had Caroline who was pretty much in between those two characters and I feel like she was a great middle character to have. I could see where the events in her life could lead her to be more bitter and have like a sour look on the world kind of like Nella but she still had that youthfulness to her where it made me feel like 
she connected a lot to Eliza as well. I think all of these three characters were very beautifully written, so unique, and with the story being told in three perspectives, I think the author did a fantastic job with distinguishing their voices. I feel like whenever you were in Nella's perspective, you knew it was Nella, and whenever you were in Caroline's, you knew it was Caroline, and when it was Eliza, you knew it was Eliza. I think the author did a fantastic job with writing these characters. This might be a little bit spoilery. I don't think it's spoilery but in case you don't want to be spoiled, if you see a little beetle on the screen, this could be somewhat of a spoiler, so just proceed through this section with caution until the beetle is no longer on the screen. What I loved about Eliza and Nella, I loved the dynamic between those two characters. I loved seeing them interact, but then also when we were in Nella's perspective and she was trying to protect Eliza and kind of push her away a little bit, I loved seeing Nella's inner dialogue as all of that was happening. And then when you would get Eliza's perspective and how she was being, you know, where she was persistent and she was trying to help Nella and she wanted to do this and she wanted to learn. She just wanted to know more about life and what this lost apothecary was and really wanted to prove herself to Nella. I loved seeing those two characters when they interacted but then getting their individual chapters with those interactions. What I absolutely loved was through this entire story with Nella trying to push Eliza away. She was trying to do it to protect Eliza from everything that was surrounding and starting to unfold around this lost apothecary. I loved how the ending was or it was almost in the reverse. So that I really loved. I thought that the ending to this was really sweet. Even with the ending in the 18th century and then when we come to modern time, the end, the true ending of the story, I loved the true ending of this story. I thought it was amazing. I could not get over it. The pretty big reason why I knocked off half a star, and maybe I just need to investigate the books that I am reading before I just dive into them, and I feel like I've mentioned this a lot on my channel. There's talk of cheating in this book, which leads to a lot of what's going on in this book. While the cheating is not at all the forefront of the story, it's mentioned throughout. There's some things that surround that as the story progresses. While it's not the center of the story and it's not really even about that, I'm just still not a fan of cheating and I still feel like I keep picking up books where that is one of the themes in the, the books that I have been picking up. And I don't know why. I mean, I feel like there's such a wide variety and I don't know why I keep picking up books that have a little bit of cheating mentioned and sprinkled throughout the stories, but this is the third book this year I have picked up that has had cheating in it. So maybe I'm just not doing a good job of researching the books that I'm reading. I also am one of those people where I don't want to know a whole lot of the books before I go into them. I think I need to do a little bit more due diligence with the books that I read before I just dive in, but that was something I wanted to know as to why I took off half a star. While it's not on page, it's talked about spring sprinkled throughout the story, and it's just not something I jive with. I don't really like reading about that. So this was the book that I read for the weekend reading and writing vlog. I did not get to The Ballerinas by Rachel Kapolk Dale, which I didn't think I would, and I had mentioned that at the beginning of this video. I was just able to get through most of The Lost Apothecary. I asked my mom her thoughts and her feelings on this book, and she did have very similar feelings to me. She really enjoyed the plot, she really loved the characters, and she thought that it was a very beautiful way to tell these three women their story. And and how the plot and how this lost apothecary shaped their lives. She loved it. She listened to only the audiobook while I listened to the audiobook and read the physical copy. She loved the mystery. She would text me certain things. I won't spoil anything, but when there were certain things that would happen, she would text me whatever it was with like little eyeballs or explanation, explanation, exclamation points, question marks, and things like that. I just wanted to give you guys her update since this was also a buddy read that I did with my mom and I had mentioned that earlier. But that's going to be it for this video everyone. I want to thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me for the weekend. My name is Autumn and I will see you in the next one. Bye.